Okay, in this video, we're going to put a figure in our document and we're going to put a caption on the figure. And we're also going to do a few other things besides. Uh, one of the things that we'll do is once we've got a figure in there, we'll label our figure so that we can refer to it in our document. Um, and you can also use the same sort of trick when you're labeling equations and referring to them. So let's start off with the figure. Okay, we're going to need a picture. So a good source of pictures is Wikipedia. And maybe we can go get a picture of my favorite mathematician, Leonard Euler. Here he is. So we'll go in here, more details. We need a sufficiently large picture. I think that's probably going to be good enough. About that size there. We're going to save this to our computer. So save image as. I think I'll put that in my downloads. I might just change the name a little bit. I might call it zero hyphen Euler. Like that. Okay, great. Now, um, first thing we need to do, if we're using Overleaf, which we are here, I'm just going to expose this again. So I've got my upload icon. And then you can either drag and drop or you can go searching for it on your computer. There it is right there. So now that we've uploaded it, we can just put that back. Um, all right, where's a good place to put it? Let's put it in the next section, maybe. Okay, so we put images in side figures. Okay. Okay, as shown in figure one, maybe. Okay, that should be fine. All right. So how do we do it? We need to go forward slash begin. And then inside the curly brackets here, we're going to go figure. And as soon as we start to see it in the list, we can just click on that. Now, this is really nifty. My LaTeX editor that I normally use doesn't give me this uh, straight away. I have to manually put it all in, but Overleaf's really nifty. It gives it, it centers the figure and it puts include graphics and caption and all that just automatically. I really, really like that. Um, in order to use this command here, include graphics, we just need to go up here into our preamble and we need to put in another package. All right. So how do you do that? Forward slash use package. And in the curly brackets, graphic X is what it's called. And I can see it right there. That's just a package that allows us to put images into our document. Now, I've got to remember, what did I call it? I think I called it zero hyphen Euler. All right, so there it is there. You actually don't need the dot JPEG bit at the end. You can just write zero hyphen Euler. It's not going to harm you, though, if you, if you put the dot JPEG at the end as well. Okay, so what would be a nice caption? Uh, Euler, <laughs> being really creative here. And because this isn't our own uh, picture, we should say where it came from. Source Wikipedia, put a full stop there. And then finally, the label, and we'll see how this works in a moment. Maybe just Euler. You want to be fairly... Um, explicit with what you call these things because uh, as your document grows in size you're going to get more and more things that you're labeling and if you don't label them clearly it'll be hard to remember exactly what each of those things were all right so I think we should just click compile here and see what we get so we'll come down here Do we have a an error? The float is too large. Okay, fair enough. So perhaps what we need to do is we just need to make this a little bit smaller. So in here in square brackets, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the size that we want this thing to be. So I might say I would like the width to be equal to maybe 40% of the text width. I'll start with that as a as my first guess and then we'll go from there. So let's compile and see how we go. 
Ooh, still looking pretty big, isn't it? Uh, now where is it? Oh, it's actually not too bad. I think we got lucky there. That seems to be about right. So that's one of the things that you can do. You can say, I want it to be a certain width with re relation to the text width, or you could have uh, another way that I like to do it is to do it in terms of scale. So we could just scale it down to 10% of what it started at. Some people like to work that way. So that's 10% of the size. Obviously, if we go to 100% of the size, that's going to be a little bit too big. Um, but you will see. Where's it going? Oh, there it is. <laughs> yep, way, way too big. But in this case, I like width. So 40% of the text width like that. That seems good. Okay, now, um, one sticking point I think when you're getting started with this is where LaTeX places the figures. Um, it sort of decides for itself and it says, oh, I think that's a good place to put it. There's a few things that you can do to force, its, force it to be in a certain spot. So you can see that this figure here has appeared above the text, we put images inside figures. Whereas in the code, we've got, we put images inside figures before the figure. So to kind of force it where you want it, you can put square brackets here and you can say H, H for here. Okay. And now you can see that it's underneath that text there. So we put images and then it's underneath, just like here in our code. So that's what H does. There's another... Uh, thing you can do, you can put B for the bottom of the page. That might be some place that you think, oh, that's going to suit that particular image right down at the bottom. Or you can even put P. And P is saying all of these floating environments, all of these things like tables and figures and all that type of thing, they're just going to be given their own separate page. Okay, like that. In the context of what we're doing here, though, I think H is a pretty good option. And honestly, just letting LaTeX decide where to put it is also quite a good option very often. Okay, so that's how you use uh, figures. Now, you could imagine as you get more and more figures in your, in your document, you're going to somehow lose track of which was the first one, which was the second one, which was the third one, and so forth. And so instead of hard coding figure one like that, a better way to do it is to say, well, you know what? We've labeled this thing already. Why don't we just refer to that label? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tilde here and I'm going to go forward slash refer. And in uh, curly brackets, I want to find the one that I came up with. So what was it? Fig colon Euler like that. Okay, and actually this is annoying me, all of this dummy text here, so I'm just going to get rid of that for now and recompile that. So in this case, it won't change anything. This is still going to be figure number one because it's the only figure in our document, but it's going to auto magically update to make sure it's it's got the right number there. Okay, notice how it's, it's saying figure one, but I never wrote figure one. It just knows, hey, that's the first one. Uh, now, we can spiffy up these labels and references a little bit. So if we go up into our preamble again, we can use a package. And the package that I like using is called hyperref. I'll show you what hyperref does. And by the way, that package you want to sort of load uh, towards the end of the list of packages that you're putting. I don't know if that's still the case. So drop a comment down below if you know otherwise. But that's something that I learned when I was learning LaTeX. So HyperRef does a number of different things. One of the things it does is now we've got a hyperlink here. So this is clickable, which 
you know, isn't particularly useful here because the figure and the reference to the figure are uh, right next to each other. But you can imagine if they were separated out quite a bit, then uh, that wouldn't be the case. Um, and it might become more useful. Another great package to do with referencing is called VarioRef. So let's put that in. VarioRef. And I'll show you what VarioRef does. I'll, I will need some dummy text here though. So let's put in quite a bit of like paragraphs 2 to 17 perhaps, of this dummy text from Immanuel Kant. And I'll explain why. What I'm trying to do here is I want to make sure that we have our reference to figure one and then a whole bunch of text before we actually see figure one. Because remember, we're using the H command to say, please put it here. And it's saying, OK, fine, I'll put it after all of that dummy text there. Now that we've got Vario ref loaded, instead of referring to this, we can put vref. And I'll show you what that does. So and I'll, I'll just compile it twice. Uh, sometimes it doesn't get it right the first time. It may well have done just now, but I just want to make sure that it's getting it right. So when we come up here, you see what it's saying? It's saying figure one on page six. And that's really useful to the reader. The reader will say, oh, OK, I've got to go forward a little bit. They won't just look there and see, oh, I don't see figure one. I'm going to give up. You're giving them a bit more information because you're using vref as opposed to ref. OK, so that's what, what that does there. Now, this same strategy, by the way, we can use when we're labeling equations. So let's go up here to this equation that we put in an equation environment. Let's label this. So we'll come in here because we're in an environment. I'm going to tab across. I want to go label. And in curly brackets, I'm going to put EQ for equation. And this is called the Pythagorean theorem. OK, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. That's what I'm labeling it, the Pythagorean theorem. OK, so this means now that we've labeled it, we can refer back to it. Equation, OK, tilde, ref, and then we've got a call on that thing. So there it is. Theorem is known as the Pythagorean Theorem. Okay. And again, you can use a VREF there. Uh, there's nothing stopping you. In this case, I, I don't feel like using a VREF. I'm just going to use an ordinary ref. And you see what, what's happened here. I've got a hyperlinked thing going to equation one. And it just knew that it's equation one just because it's the first equation that we've put in our document. But as that changes, uh, reference to that label is also going to change. So it might end up being equation 100 for all I know. It depends how, how long our paper is. So this is a very, very powerful technique when you're using LaTeX, labeling things and then referring to those labels um, so that things automatically kind of do the heavy lifting for you without you having to worry about things. Okay, that's enough for this video.